tonight on KSL Outdoors. Utah's longest held outdoor tradition kicks off this weekend. It's the opening of the general rifle deer season. There's some good bucks out there. I think we had good antler growth. I'm Adam Eagle, and we're live at Deer Camp next. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. It's one of Utah's longest held traditions, and it's going strong. Hey, I'm Adam Eagle. Thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. We are live at Deer Camp with my good friends, the Pritchetts, or as we like to call them, the Griswolds. Yeah, that's us. And uh, if anything bad could happen, it happens to us. You can't make this up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've had rain, snow, wind. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Mike and, uh, and I have been doing stories for 20 years together. Yeah. Mike uh, does the King's Camel turkey hunts every year for kids with special needs. This year, your two daughters. Yep, yeah, my two daughters. Picked us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they drew their deer tags. First thing they said is they want to mentor their deer tags. And so instantly we thought of the two cutest girls that I know, Samantha and Acey, who's been turkey hunting with me before and has never shot a big deer or shot a deer ever. 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 Yeah. So... The girls, we went and surprised them, mentored them, and gave them a rifle, and here we are today. And you can't make this up. You cannot make this up. <laughs> it was an awesome morning. Uh, we went out early this morning and uh, started finding deer right away. Let's check it out. There they are. They're awake. They're awake. They're awake. They just love to be around Mike, so <laughs> it wouldn't matter what it was if we were going fishing or whatever. They just love to be around Mike. Three goats in this car. Why the goats? Well, we have to have pack goats. It's just true Griswold. <laughs> we got goats. <laughs> Driving up the road, and it's bumper to bumper. Come up, you see orange everywhere. Welcome to the pumpkin patch. <laughs> Samantha said last night there was no choice. She was going to shoot first, so Sam's going to be first on the trigger. All right, let's go do this. I'm pumped. It's going to be fun. Our plan is to walk down the ridge, all nine of us, including the three goats, and see if we can spot any deer off the edge. Immediately, Mike spots a few does, but no bucks yet. We hiked all over, huh? Through the brush, it's a miracle anything was around with, what, we got nine people and three goats? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> a little further down the ridge, we find what we're looking for, some bucks, but they're too far, 500 yards, way too far for these kids to shoot. So we make a plan, go down the ridge, and get closer. So we just spotted three bucks. We got two two by threes and a big three point. So we're gonna go try and get them to within about, hopefully 250, 300 yards, and see if we can get a shot. But uh, the one three point's a big buck. It's getting late in the day, and the bucks are headed to bed. We keep walking and glassing and luck out and find them in their beds, not 300 yards away. Step steady on him. You're good. I know. I know. You can do it. Confident. Confident. Remember, you're just going to squeeze on it. We're, we're going away like this. Okay. The shot looks like a good one. You got him. You got him. Sam. <laughs> you got him. You hit him. You got him. We're pretty confident, Sam. as is Samantha. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? I'm going to put in for another one. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna do that again, huh? That was a cool experience. Oh my gosh. My first deer. I, I think he's done for. Let's go find out. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's take the goats and get them loaded up. <laughs> Come on, Sammer. Sam. Keep walking, see if we can find him. See any more blood? <laughs> that is your blood. A Utah tradition still alive, thanks in part to the Pritchett girls. I'm just so happy for you, Sam. This is awesome. Yeah, it's a good thing you did. Yeah. Really good thing. A lot of fun. Cute kids. 
<laughs> your first buck. You're going to remember that for the rest of your life, kid. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. And thanks to Mo and the other two goats, we got that deer off the mountain, Wayland. These are cool animals. I'm surprised how, how versatile they are. Yeah, they're awesome. They follow you just like dogs. No need for leashes or halters. Well-mannered. Just follow right behind you and pack your animals out for you. They were a lot of fun. And, hey, Jake, you got to be proud. Oh. I mean, Samantha did an awesome job. And what Savannah donating her and mentoring her on that hunt, she did such a great job. It was amazing. I, it just worked out so perfect that it, everything come to get together and and the girls are so fun to be together with with Mike's girls. It's it's really a lot of fun. There's something about him. Huh? He looks like Santa Claus. Oh like yeah, W. Griswold Santa Claus. <laughs> yes, yeah. My girls love to spend time with Mike. Anything with Mike is a blast. Yeah, uh, and you gotta. I mean, you gotta feel pretty good in your heart to know that there's people out there. I mean, they treat you like family. I mean, I feel like family, and I've known them for 20 years. And uh, the same way, I feel the same way. I feel like there's any time um, we're around Mike, it's it's like being with with Ken. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And now they've gotten a turkey, an antelope, and, right? And a deer. That's right. That's right. That's awesome. Hey. Pretty, pretty, pretty excited good. about it, aren't they? Yep. Hey, there's a lot more coming up here live at Deer Camp. But first, we got to do some business back home with this week's quiz question. Since 2014, the DWR have monitored the survival of roughly 2,000 mule deer in Utah. The division has also been examining the interactive effects of habitat and predation. By monitoring body condition, survival, and cause-specific mortality on herds, managers have the ability to identify populations that appear to be limited by predation, habitat, or both. Over the past 20 years, our deer population has been increasing, not by a lot, but it is slowly going up. Our quiz question tonight is, what percentage over the past 20 years has our deer population increased? Now, once you know the percentage, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, send us a private message or email me at aequal at ksl.com with the correct answer. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner and give the answer on our page the following week. The winner walks away with a $50 gift certificate from our friends over at Smith & Edwards. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford. Be right back to Deer Camp. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith & Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, the Division of Wildlife Resources, Sportsman for Fish and Wildlife, Bird Brothers Tire and Service, King's Camo, Stedman's Recreation, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here live at Deer Camp. We're just up uh, Spanish Fork Canyon here with my buddy Mike Pritchett. And, and Mike, you know, we've been in a 20-year drought, but we, and when the deer numbers are down a little yeah, bit, they're, they're, they're not what they were when we were kids. No. But we saw a, quite a few deer today. Yeah, we saw quite a few uh, deer. We saw a couple mature deer. That one buck was a really nice mature th buck, three-point buck, and yeah. a couple others looked like they were mature too, and some does, and all the does looked to me had fawns. So, yeah, yeah it was a good time. I mean, they're... Enough deer that we had a good time. Yeah, we had a great time. And it wasn't too bad of a pumpkin patch. I mean, it was a little bit in the morning, but not that bad. No. You know, we're sitting right now about 82% of uh, objective for our deer population in Utah. I got a chance to meet the new, well, meet him. I've known Dax Mangus for a long time, but he is the new big game coordinator for the state of Utah. He has, uh, you know, Utah has been doing a lot of things when it comes to studying our deer herds and trying to improve them for all of us. We'd all like deer tags. I didn't draw this year. My son luckily did. But uh, they're doing their best they can to try and improve and make sure the habitat and uh, the predators are under control. We've had a pretty good summer. We had monsoon pattern rains. The deer should be in great shape, great condition. We have pretty good fawn numbers. Our deer populations are still down, kind of like lingering effects of long-term drought. But... It should be a similar hunt to the last couple of years. Uh, there's some good bucks out there. I think we had good antler growth with the, that early moisture and that wet summer. So should be an, an okay deer hunt. Not going to be, you know, a game changer, amazing, but also not the worst we've had. So we're putting that zero collar on. As we just told you in our quiz question, the DWR monitors our deer herd with a collar study that they've enacted on 15 units in the state. I will just go in, capture fawns, bucks, and does, put a GPS collar on them, and the data from the collar gives biologists a really good insight on how the herd is doing on each of these 15 units. 
and we're looking at movements, we're looking at body condition. When we have an animal that dies, we get a notification just really quickly. And we have a biologist usually out that responds to that notification that we had an animal die within a day or two. Got it. And we can determine cause-specific mortality, so exactly what killed that animal. Did it get hit by a car? Was it killed by a lion? Did it starve to death or have a disease? And it's really letting us focus in and get a, a really good snapshot of what's happening with our deer populations and helps us identify our limiting factors and be able to focus and working on those on those things so we can do, do the most we can to help our deer populations thrive and, and do well. Yearling bucks represent about half of the harvest on many units during the hunts. Dak says the data from the studies they've been working on show that hunters should expect to see fewer yearling bucks on the hunt this year. The fawns from last year, so the fawns from the spring of 2021 would be this year's yearling bucks. Unfortunately, we had horrible drought, record high temperatures like in June when we had fawns, you know, newborn fawns on the ground, and we had pretty crummy fawn survival early on last summer. Then the end of last year, we had great monsoon pattern rains, and the does came into last winter in great condition. We had a relatively mild winter. And this, this spring, I think we had great fawning. So we're looking to have a great yearling crop for next year. This year, not as good. You know, this long-term drought and the impact it has on deer, it's kind of a bummer sometimes. You know, we've had good conditions last fall and last winter, and this summer's been good but we really need a year just to get back on level ground before we can start trying to maybe grow, grow deer. On your way home from the hunt, if you see a big game check station, do the deer a favor, make sure to stop. The information gathered helps DWR managers better understand how our herd is doing. And the biologists are collecting some data from deer. They're looking at antler sizes and age classes. But probably the most important thing we're looking at is we're looking at chronic wasting disease or CWD. In the last couple of years, we're starting to see some spikes in a few areas in CWD prevalence in deer. It poses a pretty significant long-term threat to deer population health in the state of Utah. On our website, you can see the units, the specific units that we're testing in this year. And if you harvest a deer in one of those units, Stop by a check station or a DWR office and we'd love to get a sample from you and, and try to stay on top of what's happening with that, with that horrible disease in our deer populations. So what's going to help to bring back our deer herd? Well, there's not a lot biologists can do other than to keep doing what they're doing and that's uh, manage them as best they can. We need weather. Luckily, we're getting some right now. Back here live at Deer Camp and we're with Aislinn and Savannah, the two sisters that uh, mentored the kids, the twins today, why, why? Why? We've been doing this our whole life. Our dad has been taking us hunting our whole life and it's, it's time to share with the next generation yeah. and all future generations. Your dad has been taking disabled kids turkey hunting for 20 years. Your dad has, has been helping out with the Salem Pond and well, putting it together, the Salem Pond fishing event for 20 some odd years. Wow. Where does he get that? Uh, that, oh, I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> Something he's always had, and he has instilled into all of us kids to yeah. reach out and help. And there's a need, you know, you fill it. Yeah. We saw a need in the community, and we're trying to fill it. Well, you guys did a good thing today. It was a lot of fun, and uh, we can't uh, not mention Kevin Pritchett, the older brother. He's not here with us today. He's up probably hunting himself, but uh, it's a good time. I think he's up at Strawberry. And hey, speaking of Strawberry, fall fishing is in the air. As the water cools, the fishing gets hot. Let's check out that fishing report with the guys back at Fish Tank. So do you think it's the wrong season for colored eggs? Well, I don't. I'm Mickey Anderson from Fish Tech with this week's spawning report. Fish are spawning right now, and the first thing I wanna say is don't fish for those fish. That's the future of the river. And watch your step. Don't step on a red. Now, red is a cleared gravel area, usually in shallow water and sometimes near a bank. That's where the eggs are gonna be. Now, not all fish spawn at the same time, and there's plenty of other fish to fish for, and they love to eat eggs, so they're really easy to catch. Here's the order of colors that I use. I start with a really fluorescent color, because there's not a lot of eggs in the water at the start, and the fish are looking for it, so a color like this can work. Now, once they're in full spawn, then I go to the more natural colors, something like this, and you can fish them anywhere, but the best holes are the deep holes right behind these spawning areas. Now after the spawn, 
The eggs have been fertilized or some have died and they get a real pale color to it. Now these will still be in the water and they get washed out of the reds from people walking around or from the fluctuating current. Hey, so for these colored egg tips and a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech, we'll help you out. And now for tonight's fishing line. <laughs> Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here live at Deer Camp. We're here with the girls. All three of them had a chance to hunt today, and it was all because of uh, mentoring for the for Sammy and AC. But for Jordan, you've actually drew a tag, and you've been doing this uh, thing with Mike for a long time as well. Yeah. How'd you meet him? I met him at the fishing day trip where the special needs kids go. Yeah. And one day he just came up saying, hey, you want to go turkey hunting? <laughs> Stranger danger. Yeah. <laughs> and so I didn't know what to do. Picked up my phone and said, okay, my mom's on the other line. You want to talk to her? Yeah. And that's how I met him. And that's how it started. And that's how, it's, that's how it started for this entire family. It's gone all the way down to the girls and to uh, white hair, as we call him. We want to talk a little bit more about these goats. That was a lot of fun today. I was impressed. Yeah, you've been fascinated with the goats all morning. And, yeah, they're awesome. It's hard to beat them. You go hunt like we did today. You know, we're putting on several miles. And, these guys are bringing all of our water, all of our snacks, and we get a deer down. And instead of adding more pa weight to our packs, throw it on the goats and head out and beat the storm. Yeah, and you were telling me 40 pounds? Yeah, yeah. Um, depending on the condition, a uh, mature four- to five-year-old goat carry anywhere from 40 to 55 pounds. And the best thing I thought about them is, I mean, they weren't tethered. I've hunted with llamas, mules, horses. These things were like my lab. Yeah, that's one awesome thing about them is they're just well-mannered, uh, follow right behind you. No need uh, for leashes or to tether them up. Uh, <clears throat> just follow you. When you sit down, they sit down and uh, just watch your snacks and your trees because they, they're going to want to share. <laughs> and your rundowns. <laughs> uh, Mo was trying to eat my rundown earlier, so <laughs> they'll yeah. eat anything, huh? Oh, yeah, they'll eat anything. They're, <laughs> they've been eating thistle today and... Just stuff you couldn't believe. Nice. Well, hey, like we were telling you earlier, it has been raining since about noon today, and it's picking up again. Let's check that recreation forecast now and find out how the rest of the hunt's tuning up by turning it over to Kevin and Kristen back in the weather department. Thanks a lot, Adam. Well, it is an annual tradition for so many. It's the opening of deer hunt. Now, I want to take you back a few years. This was 2013. Ray Rawson took this shot as deer hunt opened. A fresh blanket of snow blanketed northern Utah. And we're in for the same scenario this year. Take a look Saturday for the different areas that you might be hunting. Rain and snow and temperatures plummeting compared to the 60s and 70s we've been having. We're talking 40s, 30s, and even 20s up on the north and south slopes of the Uintas. As you go into camp, it's going to be very different than how you're going to be coming out because of the rain and snow. Be careful, be advised, and have a great hunt out there. Adam will be back with more outdoors right after this. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors live here at Deer Camp. Some of the best memories are made around the campfire, eating food, and out on the hunt. And hey, we hope that uh, when you're out this year on the hunt or anytime fishing, hiking, it doesn't matter. Take lots of snapshots, submit them to our snapshot contest. We'd love to see them. Time to turn it over to you for the best of the week, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with some patience that paid off. Robbie had a limited entry elk tag for the Wasatch unit and had a bull bedded. The bull finally made an appearance and Robbie was having elk dinner that night instead of tag soup. A great hunt with family and friends. These ladies had the time of their lives catching salmon on the Kenai Peninsula. Most of them teach together at the same elementary school and have already decided that catching salmon is almost as fun as teaching school and they have plans to go back to Alaska. They might even bring their husbands along, but only if they have to. Shan shows off her first bull elk, this dandy six by six. She and her husband Cody were down on the Red Ranch CWMU on the LaSalle Mountains, a memory these two won't soon forget. In 2017, Megan and her father both drew out for limited entry elk tags on the Manti LaSalle unit. Megan decided to surrender her tag to give her dad the best chance at bagging a bull. This year, it was finally Megan's turn. 
And with the help of family and friends, they were able to track down this beautiful bull opening morning. But our young winner tonight has accomplished more in nine months than most adults do their entire lives. Young Oakley is off to an incredible year. She shot a cougar in January, last month she shot a bear, and then a few weeks ago bagged her first buck in Idaho. Dad says Oakley isn't done yet. She's got a deer tag and an elk tag for Utah. Man, Oakley, you are a very lucky young lady to have such an amazing family to share these great experiences with. Those are some cool snapshots there, kid, and now our cool prize to go along with it for having just won our Snapshot of the Week. Remember, submit your pictures or video plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins the Camp Chef Versatop Grill. You can check out this stove and much more Camp Chef gear at Smith & Edwards. Plus, the weekly winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef Pellet Grill. With these Camp Chef accessories, take your chef-level cooking from the back patio to the back country. Eat better with Camp Chef. It's the way to cook outdoors. Hey, where's Russ? Where's right Russ? Right here, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, from our Griswold family to your family, man, get out with your family and friends and make some memories outdoors. Russ, that was awesome. Oh, great time. Thank you very much.